Hello YouTube friends, today I'm bringing you an upcycle trash to treasure video because you wanted it. Thank you for everybody who voted in my community tab. This one's for you. I got this cabinet for free off of Craigslist. It was put out on the curve as part of a bunch of salvage from a home renovation. I thought it was really neat because it has the original key. I believe it possibly was handmade and it was a wall cabinet of some sort. This project had its challenges, but it ended up turning out way better than anything I could have ever imagined. So if you'd like to see how I turned a piece of salvage into a one of a kind piece of furniture, keep watching. The most obvious thing and probably the most important thing I had to address about this piece was the fact that it was sitting on the ground. After all, it was a wall mounted cabinet so it had no legs. So I had to figure out how I was going to tackle that. I wasn't quite sure until I happened to go thrift shopping later on that week and I came across these office chairs. Now these office chairs are hideous. <laughs> But hold on right there, thinking outside the box a little bit, I thought the side arms were a really cool shape. And being that they were solid wood, I was like, you know what, maybe I could turn them into some sort of legs. So I picked up one, it cost me $5, and I was just able to take it apart with a couple of screws. I tossed the rest of the chair away, sorry. There really wasn't much worth saving anyhow, it was just particle board and stained upholstery. So here I am just trying to figure out where I'm going to place the leg exactly. The problem I had here was that I didn't want it to interfere with the door opening and closing. After trial and error, I figured out that if I placed it just right behind where this piano hinge was, we were good to go. Say pretty, please. Oh, speaking little white lies. I've got a rebel soul. 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 Oh, just get. I brought out my little trim router to finish off the edges on these legs and match the cabinet a little bit better. The process goes really fast. Whenever I'm doing freehand work with a router, I much prefer to use this little trim router versus a full size one because with my short fingers, I just feel like I have more control. If you are enjoying this content, please consider subscribing. To finish prepping these legs for stain, I sanded them down with 120 grit sandpaper. The finish came off really easy.
after the legs were finished being built, I was able to move on to the cabinet first by removing all of the hardware and disassembling the door so that I could get to the finish properly. I am always in the process of learning more and trying out new products, so I thought I'd give this carbide scraper I've seen a lot of other refinishers use lately. I'm not going to lie, there is a little bit of a learning curve to it, but once you get the hang of it, it's very helpful. I was able to scrape off the finish in these tight little grooved areas where the glass is going to go very easily. It would have been very difficult to sand that. Also, it was helpful in removing several layers of top coat off of these shelves. It was a lot less messy than trying to strip it and it cut down on the amount of sandpaper I needed to completely remove the finish. Now this cabinet itself is made out of solid oak. However, these shelves are made out of particle board just covered with an oak veneer. If you're asking why I didn't replace the shelves with solid wood shelves, it's because it's almost impossible to find a completely flat piece of solid wood. These man-made substrates are really probably the best material when it comes to shelving for that reason. And unless these shelves were damaged or swollen, pieces broken off, there is really no reason to spend the extra money in replacing the shelves. I used a little bit of dark colored wood filler to fill in areas that needed to be concealed and then just sanded it smooth. I went with a dark color because I knew I was going to be using a dark color stain, this antique walnut stain by General Finishes. This is a very easy stain to use. You just have to apply it, make sure you kind of get an even coating and just work it into all the areas, especially on oak. You have a lot of grain, so you'll see me kind of swirling it around and just rubbing it back and forth to make sure that I get it into all those nooks and crannies. And then before it starts to dry, I just wipe it off with the grain in even strokes and you get a pretty good consistent result. Now, I don't always just use general finishes stains, but I've noticed with some of my more favorite stains that I've used for years in the past, I'm just not getting the same results I used to. It's almost as if they've changed the formula. Have you noticed this as well? After letting that gel stain dry completely, I sealed everything up with a water-based polyacrylic in a spray formula. This was a lot easier than trying to brush it on, especially since there's so many different angles with this piece. To create a backer for this cabinet, I just cut out a piece of basic wall hardboard. I usually go and purchase an entire sheet and I'm able to get several projects out of that one sheet. This particular piece right here is a remnant left over from a dresser I previously did. And once I'm done cutting the piece that I'll need for this cabinet, I'll still have enough left over for probably a couple more. The only problem with that brown hardboard is that it's kind of boring. So to give it a nice pop color and a little bit more interest, I covered that backer with this cool geometric fabric, which is actually a curtain that I purchased from Ikea several years ago. If you're ever looking for fun, um, kind of heavier weight fabrics to use for upholstery or just crafts in general, try looking at curtains. You can usually save quite a bit of money and get a decent amount of fabric in just one curtain. I use this Loctite spray adhesive to help me adhere the fabric to the backer with a temporary fix. Make sure you're masking whenever using this product and make sure you're doing it in an area where you don't mind getting overspray. As you see, I'm spraying it over dirt. This stuff is pretty nasty. After you spray your surface, you want to give it just a few minutes to allow it to get nice and tacky. I then had my son come and help me stretch my fabric out real nice and tight so I could place it down evenly. And then I went from one end to the other, smoothing out from the center to get out any kind of lumps and wrinkles. While my glue was setting in place, I always try to multitask, so I cleaned up this piano hinge with a little bit of Barkeeper's Friend and Steel Wool. It came out looking brand new. It was finally time now to just attach everything together, so I placed my cabinet on top of an elevated surface and then attached my legs 
onto the sides. This is something that I saw Jay from Flipping Drawers do and thought it was genius. As you can tell, I also put that hinge in there right away because I wanted to make sure it didn't interfere where the leg was gonna be placed. After I found the position, I traced it with a pencil and then I was able to screw four pilot holes into the side of my cabinet where I knew the leg was gonna be sitting. And then I attached my leg back on with some clamps and then screwed it in from the inside. Before moving along, I wanted to make sure that the hinge was not going to be interfering with that first leg. And we were clear, so I removed the clamp and then just slid the cabinet off of one of the bottom supports that I had it sitting on because I now had a leg supporting it. And then just attached the second leg the way I attached the first one. Here it is attached. Now the moment of truth. Is it going to stand? And we're golden. When it came time to attach the backer, I used just regular panel nails and a little hammer to drive them in. As you can see, I wasn't too concerned about cutting the fabric to the exact shape of that backer because it's always easier just to clean up your lines when you're done. I did, however, go around very carefully to make sure that the backer did not overlap the cabinet at all. Once it was in place, I started at a corner and then just worked my way around the cabinet driving in those nails. And once it was completely secure, I got a brand new razor blade and then just cut along the edge and was able to clean up that fabric very easily. My son was nice enough to kind of hold the door in place while I attached it back on. I didn't make him hold it the entire time. What I did was just, I put one screw at the top, one in the middle, and one at the bottom, and then I was able to replace the rest of them on my own. I replaced all the screws in this cabinet because the previous ones were mostly stripped. Here I am replacing all the screws by hand, driving them in so I can feel the point of tension where it's just enough and then I replaced that door lock and then inserted brand new panels of glass. I was so excited at this point. I knew this was gonna make all the difference. Fun fact, it was so much cheaper to get glass cut versus plexiglass. In the past, I used to always get plexiglass versus glass because it was just so much cheaper, but now it's kind of flip-flopped. The final touch was I replaced the shelf pins with brand new metal ones. So are you ready to see what this cabinet looks like now? Here's what it looked like before. What's your story? What's your sign? It's like we're twin flames in a different life. Deep connection, lights a spark. It's like you know me in the depths of my heart. We're dreamers. Yes. 
What's your type? Somehow I want